And we're live. And in real life. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to Lionscapes. Um, it's great again to have you here. Yeah. Today we put, a, you know, we defined a very interesting challenge for us. And we've been looking for it for quite a while now. Um, and I'm really excited what's going to happen and what's going to, um, you know, come out of this. Yeah, but did we really uh, look at it for such a long time and, and think about it? Yeah, well, for a week. <laughs> for a week, yeah. <laughs> for a week. Anyway, so today we are going to uh, use poetry as a source for inspiration for drawing. Um, a while back we've been asked, what are our sources of inspiration? And, you know, we try to draw it from different sides. And as a creative, it's a good idea to look at other creative fields and try to translate what they are doing into what you are doing. Try to reinterpret it with your own tools, your own way of communication. And one field that we haven't looked into yet um, was poetry. Mm -hmm. So we asked you to send us some of the poems, something that uh, you um, like. We got some poems, so thanks a lot. We will be also reading them today. And we also prepared uh, a selection of ours, different kinds, and we're going to use them now to get inspired and do some drawings. Yeah. So what should I um, prepare, Sonia? Um, we're gonna keep it very basic today. So you can just take a pen or a pencil and a piece of paper. But since there are poems and probably we're gonna also try to express some feelings, you can bring some additional material. So I brought my watercolors, obviously, a glass of water, a brush and uh, a paper towel, towel and then Gashper put on the table also a solid <laughs> wax marker. Just if you're uh, asking yourself what those funny things are, um, it's from a brand called Molotov and that's the flame type or something. I don't know, it's, it's made for tagging. Yeah, we'll see if we're gonna be using this, but basically get whatever you want and have. This is gonna be really an experiment, so bear with us. Okay. Um, first of all, we want uh, basically to start it uh, up with um, also a big thank you. We got already a donation from Michelle. Yay! <laughs> so thanks a lot, Michelle. <laughs> thanks for supporting us. Um, you know, you can support our chat by uh, you can support our channel by sharing it, liking it. You know, also any donation we get gets into making more of this. So we really appreciate it. But for those who are here for the first time. Michelle just used Super Chat, which is basically that small dollar button uh, down on the, just on the bottom of, of your chat. And for that, you can also give them us a small donation. Yeah. Yeah, but are you ready? Should we start? Yeah, so let us know. At any time, you can ask questions in the um, chat. And if you're watching this on replay, do leave us a question or a comment. We're really interested how you will like or how you will find this creative exercise because it is something new and special for us as well. All right, so let's look at how we're going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, we've got eight poems today. Yeah. We'll see how many we can get through. And what are we going to be focusing on? So each song or each, each poem, poem especially, we, we were considering what kind of as aspects are we usually focusing on. And these are three uh, aspects. And the first one is the one, the visual one. So when you read a poem, you have like this memory. It triggers your memory or your thoughts. Like mind's eye, right? Yeah. Like images yeah. spring in the yeah. head. Yeah. And the thing is that it can describe a situation very well or it can trigger trigger your own memory. So it flips you back to that situation that you experienced already. So the second one, so the first one is the visual. The second one is the auditive, the one that you can hear. So that's the rhythm, right? Rhythm, the sounds, yeah. metric, you know. And uh, sometimes you can really hear the, the noises that are expressed in the poems. And then there's the third one. So we have the visual, we have the audio, uh, the, 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 the hearing. Yeah, which one was the third? 
And then we have the emotions. And then, ah, the emotions. And then the poems usually evoke certain emotions, um, at least with some people. I definitely know I really get emotional when drawing, uh, when um, reading poetry. And um, this is something that one can also try to express then through drawing and painting. So we're going to try all three of these and I would say let's go to it. Yeah. All right. Okay, so... You start with number with one. Number one. Yeah. Uh, and turn on yes and okay and now do i have to turn this around uh yeah you need to switch the camera i don't know what it's why it switched again should i help you yeah please okay so can you just speak with our community a bit and i'm gonna so um, now the technical genius for the live stream is going to fix everything i just did <laughs> wrong um and meanwhile yeah um tell us how um what have you been using for inspiration up until now? Have, has anyone ever tried to uh, use poetry as a source of inspiration? And do you even read poetry? I know for some people it's you know completely unusual to read any piece of poetry once they're out of school. And some people love poetry. Um, and I must say for myself, um, we do have a couple of poetry books, but I don't read it as often. But when I do, I really love it. Sometimes I go like on a poetry binge online and I just read one poem after the other. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, and I also think that we're gaining so much through this live chat lesson because um, we were preparing and searching for appropriate songs. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Dory. You get the heart right away. Okay, I think this, this would be good. All right. Okay, I'm just going to lock mm -hmm. it for you. Thank you very much. And now you start with number one and you go down, down, down. Okay. And don't forget to to shut the eye down. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so before we start, we need to give a, a heart away as well. All right, so we have a heart and thank you for the donation, Isidore. <laughs> thank and, you. And um, we really appreciate it. Yay. So, let's get to it. Get your piece of paper. Sonia, will you do the honor of opening up? The the, the 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 session yeah sure uh you mean by sketching yeah yeah sure all right okay i'm gonna try to so how this is going to work i will read you the poem um and you know try to listen try to um you know get it in and the first thing you know the first one that we are going to do we are going to let me see where this is it's not as I would like it to have, but... So, the first one we're going to try to feel, right? Yeah. So, this is a poem by Rupi Kaur. Uh, uh, I think it's, she's a Canadian poet. And she does these beautiful, beautiful poems that really evoke emotions, I would say. So, we will just start. And I would suggest that you concentrate on what you feel and then try to draw it. We will give ourselves a five minute time limit and uh, we will see how far we come uh, with different techniques but pick your tool that you want to uh, draw emotions with and um, and we will start. You ready? Yeah. Okay. So I will read you the poem. I'll do okay. my best and uh, let's see. So, sh should I start the drawing with you or should I just wait for you? What's the procedure? The procedure is you wait. I wait, okay. Okay. So, sunflowers. Despite knowing they won't be here for long, they still choose to live their brightest lives. Oh, this one is so great. <laughs> All right. So, you know... Get out what you feel and try to put it on paper. Um, should we tell them something more about the process? How um, about how to express a few things? Or yeah, go on. So um, of course now we're gonna try to express what we're feeling. Um, this one should be a feeling poem. I must say for me it's much more visual than feeling. So um, I'm going to try to do my best to express myself. But especially when expressing feelings, we usually 
or we often ask ourselves, how do we do that? And there's a special language that you can use. Of course, that's the primal or basic language or patterns that you can use. And I'm going to suggest to you that when you're trying to draw your feelings, that you just stick to it. With what I mean by that is that you just... Uh, that you think about what can you do with certain patterns if you can I hope you're gonna see anything because um, for example and then you can also do some spirals and of course when we want to express some feelings that are not so pleasant then then we can also use forms like edgy forms something that has spikes or when you're in a chaos you can always do something like just a net of different different uh, lines that's also possible what do we else have um, you can always do a maze as well. So imagining that you can do a labyrinth or something similar, that you're just trying to walk through. Is it also possible to express feelings with color? Of course, you can always express feeling with color. Or, of course, also in mediation, you usually use the face expression. So, you can always start with, with like, expression for, for happy or for, I don't know, not so happy or <laughs> <laughs> for angry. I mean, you can always start with those kind of basic elements and then you can just work on them. So if you don't know where to start, this is a pretty good, you know, way to remind you that feelings can be just expressed with simple lines. You know, immediately like something more spiky will look more energetic or also angry and something more round will feel more calm. But actually you have to also look from your perspective what you are feeling. So it might be something different for you. So this would be um, a good place to start, but don't uh, limit yourself to just this really try to reach within yourself yeah okay okay so i will read the poem again now you have it we'll make start. a screenshot and three two one it goes away yeah so this wasn't the poem yet sonia was just uh, doing uh, all the some possible emotions so now we really start all right let's go i will write it uh, read it again and you can immediately start sunflowers despite knowing they won't be here for long. They still choose to live their brightest lives. So, um, we're going to take a couple of minutes for this. I will look at the comments in between, but you, everyone who's just uh, with us, you can gladly draw along. So we're getting also some suggestions for more poems and we'll definitely look at them. If you have any other suggestions for poems, definitely tell us. You, We have become um, somewhat of poetry lovers. <laughs> we really enjoyed reading them and um, in the last days because we were preparing for this and looking for some possible poems that we could draw. Um, but if you have some suggestions, do let us know. There's so much poetry out there and we basically didn't know where to start. So, we gladly accept suggestions. I noticed that it's very hard to speak when you think about poetry as well, because right now Gaspar was very engaged. He was trying to fill the whole, the you know, the silence, and I was just like, no. I mean, you need to let me, let me draw. You know, I was in, I was trying to find those feelings that I should, <laughs> and um... <laughs> I'll let you be, but. Um... I will talk silently.
No, no, it's okay. I'm done. You're done? Yes, this okay. is my wow. interpretation. You're done. Of... This is your interpretation of Rupi Kaur's sunflowers. Beautiful. So, everyone, how are you doing? Did you try to draw along? How was it to draw some emotions? What can you tell us about what you just did, Sonia? So, um, as I said, this so poem for me is very visual mm -hmm. and um, it connects so good together with the title. That's why I try to emphasize the flower. Mm. Um, and I didn't want to linger on the form of sunflower too much because of course it's important, but it's still just a metaphor for something, something else. And I did the circle, which symbolizes the sun for me, mm. which is something that's very bright and something that's the most beautiful in the whole world, especially when it rises and in, when it falls. And this is the horizon line for me. Mm. So um, each day is a new beginning and new end at the same time. So this is what it represents for me. Beautiful. All right. So, um, we've got questions from Zaki. Why Sonia is the only one to draw? You might want to draw <laughs> at the same time as her. It would be some sort of a challenge. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do one, both of us, and see. Um, we're also getting some uh, great suggestions for uh, poetry, and we'll definitely check it out. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Um, all right, I suggest we move to the next one. Okay. So, with the first one by Rupi Kaur, we tried to focus on the feelings. And now we'll move to the next one. So, you can take a snapshot of this poem if you want to finish it later. And now it's time for a classic um, by E. E. Cummings. This is something that got suggested to us by the community. So, thanks a lot mm -hmm. for getting this yeah. suggestion. And by reading it, we got a strong feeling that it's a good one um, to listen to, mm -hmm. right? Because it has like a certain rhythm. So it influences your auditive uh, perception. Yeah. So while I'll be reading, you can like focus on the rhythm mm -hmm. and see what you can make out of it. Okay. I think I'm going to close my eyes for it. So I'm going to really focus on, on the hearing. All right. Okay. Okay, I'll do my best to read it and um, to get a certain rhythm to it. So listen and um, try to get something from it for you. Maggie and Millie and Molly and May went down to the beach to play one day. And Maggie discovered a shell that sank so sweetly she couldn't remember her troubles. And Millie befriended a stranded star whose rays five longed fingers were. And Molly was chased by a horrible thing, which raced sideways while blowing bubbles. And May came home with a smooth round stone, as small as a world and as large as a loam. For whatever we lose, like a you or a me, it's always ourselves we find in the sea. Beautiful! I love this poem. <laughs> Despite not knowing any background about this poem, I really love it. And uh, I, it's it's a quite well-known poem, but um, I didn't know, you know, I don't know the background. All I appreciate is just this great melody and rhythm to it, right? Yeah. yeah. And um, I think you you should listen to yourself once again when, we, when we're done with live really? stream to your voice, because it was so nicely... Red, so congratulations. Oh, um, <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it so much, and um, yeah, even if it wouldn't be the topic water, I I was thinking constantly about water. All right. So so um, I will leave you to your freedom, creative freedom, and um, I think I'll. Yeah, just I, with this one, I will um, I will not draw along. I think it's hard. If I read it, it's a bit of a different perspective because I got it very visually. Um, then trying to remember the rhythm and depict it. But I can start, right? But you can definitely start. And everyone else, go on and start. Let's see what we can get out of this one.
Okay, so I'm focusing on the visual part, which is... Um... Oh, okay. Hmm? We said the auditive, but this visual is fine as well. I mean, it's hard to explain. I know. Let's go. <laughs> just, just, just do your thing. And I will also try to do something. By trying to remember what uh, what the poems sound like, sounded like, and uh, this might make no sense, but you know, inspiration is like that. You take it and you distill it, and what comes out on the other side can be completely different than what you started with. You know, it's like the game of I don't know how you call it in English, but we you know you used to play this game of telephones with your friends as kids. You know, you whisper something in your friend's ear and then it gets passed along and passed along, passed along and then through the whole circle after 30 people, the thing that comes out is completely different than what you said it in. So I have a feeling that inspiration and creativity is like that. You know, you take something and sometimes you can like kind of copy it but put something else in there. But if you're basically um, drawing from completely different areas, like poetry to drawing, then something else completely will come out. Oh, wow. Oh, I really like it. Mm. Okay. So that's it. That's it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, Sonia, what can you tell us about, uh, about what you just did? So, I was focusing constantly about this rhythm that you were... Mm -hmm. uh, that you were reading and mm -hmm. it was uh, so nice because I noticed that it's like a constant falling of rain mm -hmm. that sh that collects itself in a yeah puddle puddle that that collects in in puddle and I also tried to to define the raindrops in a in rows. Mm. So that that you see there is a rhythm or a rep repetition and like a structure that's not so obvious and clear at the beginning. And when you said that it's not a visual poem, that's true. But for me, this auditive experience triggered something completely new. Wow, awesome. And that's why I wanted to, to emphasize those droplets, forms, and maybe the shape of the puzzle. Amazing. I like that. Yeah. So I tried to draw along as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'll just uh, share real quick what I did. Um, so basically something completely different. <laughs> but um, all the four names created this rhythm of fours for me. And, you know, which each line kind of um, a, a form emerged. Um, so, this is what I came up with, thinking about this poem. Wow. Yeah. A, a nice uh, sketch. Also, something completely different. But I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everyone, how is this going so far for you? Is it on the completely weird side of the spectrum? Or can you, like, you know, do it uh, with us? Um, because... Um, I'm interested in how far we can stretch this creativity um, exercises. It's definitely a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, nice to have you all here. Um, Carlos, nice that you joined us. It's great to see everyone who's uh, always coming back, like Justine, uh, Michelle, we have Louis, um, Dom Pedro, um, Isidore, Eleonora. So, it's really, really nice to have you all here. I'm glad that we have this community. Also, Lena here again. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for the third one? Yeah. Yeah. So the third one should be? The third one should be visual. Mm. Mm. Oh, oh, one of my favorite. Oh, this is one of my favorite poems. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. So we got Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost. Mm -hmm. Also a well-known classic, mm -hmm. I would say. And, um, yeah, you probably know it, I guess. I guess most people would know this poem. And 
uh, especially the last part is like was somewhat of a mantra for me when I was studying. Uh huh. Um, and I'll read it now, and you you might see see why. <laughs> oh, maybe now because you said the context, we're gonna really understand it even better. Yeah. And what you felt. Yeah. Okay. All right. So everyone, um, get ready. I will read you the stopping by woods. On a snowy evening by Robert Frost. Mm -hmm. And concentrate on what your mind's eye sees when we hear those words. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I always love, I love it. I just, I really love this poem, genuinely. Um, and uh, it brings back memories of, you know, working on a project late in the night mm -hmm. uh, at the university. And I just kept <laughs> repeating in my head, you know, the woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, it has many meanings. Uh, you can understand it in many interesting ways. Mm. But for me, at those moments, it was quite literal. <laughs> yeah. Um, but would you say it was visual or it was something else then for you? Uh, I, think, you know, I, fe I feel, you know, it mm. was a lot of feelings mm. in there. But mm -hmm. poems tend to influence me in this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but this one is pretty visual, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you can... Um, should I read it again while you start drawing? Yes. All right. Yes. I like to read this one. I really like it. All right. So, whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. So, for me, this poem also can really paint the whole landscape. And I'm fascinated, Sonia, that you also kind of, your mind went there. Um, Wow, this is amazing. So, we have Kim in between while you're drawing. I will read the comment. Poetry is such a great prompt for drawing. Challenges you to draw more symbolically. Yeah, Kim, this is definitely true. Um, I have this feeling as well. Either more symbolically or really, um, really trying to to draw with feelings, I mean, which is something one does, especially when doing some abstract painting or drawing, but um, here is this like distilling some feelings into another form, which is a totally different level of challenge. I think like your brain must be, you know, doing fireworks in there. Two are enough or more? Oh, you did two. No, this is perfect. Wow. Well, it really 
it's really clear and you can really in, envision like a story um, mm -hmm. right I mm -hmm. mean it's it's really um, it gives you great suggestions like it's almost like um, storyboard for a movie it sets the tone and it it's nice awesome yeah. and we also have another donation from Pau so thanks Yay. a lot and you get a heart thank you Pau we really really appreciate it <laughs> thanks a lot and Atrum says, happy little trees when you started. Ah, uh, uh, yes, yes, happy yes. little trees. Bob Ross would be impressed with the happy little trees. <laughs> 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 Looks like a perfect campfire place, says Justine. All right, so mm -hmm. everyone, now we are wandering into uncharted territory. Um, because we will now let you um, draw freely, not what you have to see, what you heard or what you felt. But let's just continue. And uh, for the next one, we have a haiku for you. Oh, wow. Okay. By Katsushika Hokusai. It's a relatively famous haiku. Uh -huh. uh, also a very known poet. And it's very short. And um, do you accept, Sonia, to draw it while I read it? The challenge. At the same time? Yeah. That's like... A second sketch or a few five second sketch yeah a challenge you want to try it yes all right so <laughs> let's do a really fast one a poppy blooms by Katsushika Hokusai it's a haiku so it's gonna be fast all right I write erase rewrite erase again and then a poppy blooms wow <laughs> this is amazing wow. i know but since it's so fast it's so hard to to think outside of the box you know because um when you have just a few seconds you're gonna take what's in your your box you know your mm -hmm. vision box um and that's that's what's what was in mine i love it yeah yeah it all even has the form of a haiku, you know, three lines, <laughs> and the last one is, you know, the the cut, the statement, the poppy blooms. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. cool. You, you I did, like it. Oh, you know what would be interesting to do? Mm. Like uh, uh, visual haikus. Mm. You know, just like three elements, like tsam tsam, the third one, mm -hmm. you get a, wow. Mm -hmm. It already gave us a new idea, like visual haikus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Yeah, I think that would be very interesting. Okay. So, people are liking this challenge, so let's move on. And uh, now, uh, do you want to use another tool? Oh, yes, let's All right. do it. Let's, let's switch that. that up. Let's so, find something Meanwhile, else. I'll read some um, comments. So, um, looks like a perfect campfire place, yeah, and a really good challenge by Carlos. I'm really glad and thanks a lot. Um, we also got suggestions for poets, uh, Sonia, so mm -hmm. I'm really excited to, um, to try them out. And in the end, for the last one, we have a very special challenge for you. So wait and stick to the end, because I think it's going to be very interesting. And I'm really excited what you come up with. Yeah. All right. So uh, what are you going to draw? What are you going to use for drawing for the next one? Um, oh, I think, um, yeah. Watercolors, but what else? Okay, I mean, Sonia's since, favorite. Since I have them here, All right. they are just offering themselves to me. So ah, they it's call basically. You. Yeah. So maybe it's time for you to switch gears as well. Now we're going to take a little bit more time. Uh -huh. Although, I mean, if you want, the poem is pretty short. Mm -hmm. But let's see. Let's just try. Okay. So we've got another one. By Rupi Kaur. Mm. Oh, I and, love Rupi. Um, it's one of my favorite songs by her. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's short, but it's powerful. All right, so are you ready? Let's hear it. We have been dying since we got here and forgot to enjoy the view. He just needs that silence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. 
um, the first time I read it, it was, uh, you know, it, it really struck me. Yeah. Sometimes I read her poems before I go to sleep, sleep and I'm just, you know, sitting there in, in the bed and just like, oh, man, life is so beautiful and yeah. we just don't know it. Um, yeah. Beautiful. I'll read it again to you and uh, while well, we can start. Live fully by Rupi Kaur. We have been dying since we got here and forgot to enjoy the view. How many uh, seconds do I have this oh, time? Oh, you have... I, I will leave you to it this time. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you know what? I, I can actually try to um, draw this one myself as well. Yeah, please do. Yeah. Um, and we'll see what I come, come up with. Um, and one thing I'm very interested in is like where you or what you our dear landscapers will come up with. Um, you know that we have a Facebook group. You probably already know, and if you no. don't know, you what? should totally, totally We have a Facebook join. group? Oh my God. And you know why we have this group? We have it so people can share their work. Um, right now, this is the best solution we have. Maybe we'll see in the future, but it's a great place to go and uh, post your work, get feedback from us, get feedback from others. But today's thing is uh, it's probably very difficult to give to give feedback on. But still, I would be very interested to see what you came up with if you drew with us. So you can just take your phone, take a snapshot of what you know you did for a certain poem, and uh, post it in the Facebook group. We'd really appreciate uh, if you shared a bit. All right. Oh wow, Sonia went for the colors. Beautiful. Wow. And I will go for something black and white. So, we have been dying since we got here and forgot to enjoy the view. Wow, I don't even know, I don't even know how to start. I mean, hmm. I, I tend to talk when I draw some abstract things. It's, I, I don't know, I just think it helps me think, maybe. I know Sonia is not much of a talker when she delves deep into the work. But I can share and then in the end uh, show you what I did. Well, we are doing live stream, so I need to communicate <laughs> to, to a certain amount. Um, but I, I do enjoy the process where, where I can be just silent and just observe, especially when I'm doing watercolors, I noticed that I'm so intrigued by, by color and by everything that's happening on the paper that I hardly concentrate on the things around me. Um, and yeah, sometimes that's also good, just that you that you have this possibility or this uh, feeling that that you can just let go and even without any things that usually bring you that kind of things, um, like I don't know, excessive sports or Netflix or you know that you can just let go with art we have been um actually discovering how much we really enjoy you know doing and creating things um, i must say that we've been trying this creative challenges on monday especially have been pushing us to try out new things to try out new techniques new materials um, new topics things that we wouldn't be drawing before and we're really falling in love with it, you know, with the general <laughs> exploration of creativity. Yeah. So I hope a little bit is also coming through 
to you. Um, I hope you are trying different things with us. It's amazing what uh, our minds can produce and sometimes they surprise us. Sometimes our minds come up with things, probably not sometimes, but I would say always. My mind always surprises me, or rather maybe my hand surprises me. Surprises what it, you know, I'm surprised what comes out, as if the idea was not my own, as if it came from somewhere else. Is it something you can relate to, you know, when you have an idea? Sorry. It's fine. Continue. <laughs> I would like to get get a special effect, but <clears throat> you know, I'm spilling out like a beautiful speech, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm just destroying it with blowing into my piece of paper. But yeah, this is this is how this is life. <laughs> this is how creative stuff comes about. <laughs> so um, yeah, Sonia, do tell what have you created for us? Yeah, gladly. So um, I created here like uh, some sort of circle of life. Uh, because we we have everything, right? It's not just life is not black and white, but it ha has colors. I hope at least in your life as well. Uh, and um, the thing is that it's like it's it's never everything good and it's never everything bad. There's so many different shades in between, um, and that's the the beauty of it. And it's it's those small yellow dots when something bad is happening and also to to appreciate all the lessons that you that you learn in your life um and that's what i tried to symbolize like that and this black is not just like black in sense of feelings but and all the bad things that i uh, experienced in my life i mean i'm so young i I couldn't experience so so many horrible things, but and so don't overanalyze my work. It's just I really like this shade of blue. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, it's um, it's just an expression. All right. Yeah. So no psychoanalysis necessary, but I like it. So I hope uh, you are also done with this one. We took a bit more time. And we're going to continue with the next one. How about it? Yes. All right. Um, meanwhile, while I set it up, we can also show what I came up with. It's completely different. And I think I will not even, uh, I will not even try to explain it because it just, you know, came to be. It's hard to say. I didn't use any symbolism. I just read the poem and I put this on paper. You know, like I said, sometimes ideas just come from somewhere else. Okay. Okay, very graphical, very beautiful. Let's continue. All right, we have one sent from our community. Ooh. Wow. Okay. So for this one, Sonia, okay. I'm really excited about this one. And I'm really, really thankful, Louis, for sharing your poem with us. This is beautiful. And uh, I'm really excited to read it. And let's try to do something with it. Um, Sorry, I'm just turning my paper around. Yeah, that's fine. You need like another uh, piece of... Ah, okay, I, I get it. Well, it's paper. I'm trying to be respectful and not to uh, use one piece of paper per, per sketch. So. All right. Let's, uh, let's see what Ru Lewis uh, wrote and shared with us. All right, so the poem is called The Wicked Sea. The wicked sea rose from the dust and caused such great loss. But through our solitude, we learned to cope and not to yearn as much. Beautiful. I'm gonna start. All right. I just had Sonia start to interpret what she just heard. So I will just read it again, right? The wicked sea rose from the dust and caused such great loss 
but through our solitude we learn to cope and not to yearn as much. This is beautiful. So Lewis, once again, thank you so much for sharing this. We have so many different talents here in our group, in our community. This is amazing. Um, yeah, this is great. And uh, I'm really excited what Suna is coming up here with. I already like the color combination. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. That's yes. it. That's it? Yeah. Wow, that's Wicked Sea by, by Lewis Steele. Wow, beautiful. Beautiful. Can you tell us about it? Mm. Well, I think some pieces are hard to explain, as you said. Yeah. Um, but I was playing with, with words, uh, dust and wicked sea and the solitude and, um, our solitude is here somewhere where everything is just at right balance. Once everything settles, this whole crazy situation, um, but you will never forget, right? Yeah. Because you gained an experience. If you survived, then you're stronger and you find you're the, the link between those situations. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. Well, which brings us to our final poem. Mm -hmm. And this is a very special challenge. Mm -hmm. And this is a challenge for you, yes. dear Lionscapers, everyone who is watching or tuning in. So... Um, up until now, if you like this video and if you, you know found a new way to get inspired, we'd really appreciate it if you put a thumbs up so we can get it out to more people. Um, and we continue doing this Monday creativity um, challenges because I think, you know, I, I think we're having fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, yeah, and we'd also love to hear a bit from you. Now we've already done like a month of these. If you have any ideas or any suggestions for them, please, you know, let us know. Leave us a comment uh, or put it in the chat or write us. Um, it's always amazing to get feedback from you. Yeah. Oh, um, should, we, should we present them the last poem? Let's present the last poem. And this will be a surprise. Bam. Okay. Uh, should I draw with them? Sure. Right? You sure. Yeah. Okay. But I think this time, now I really need... Ah, no, I don't. It's okay. I'm going to yeah. try to. So, dear like community watching, you might have noticed that this poem is uh, most likely in, in a language uh, not known to you. And it's in Slovene, our uh, mother tongue. Mm -hmm. And it's my personal favorite poem. Mine too, but uh, as he said, his favorite poem as well. But is it your favorite poem as well? Yeah. Really? Yeah. How do we have the same favorite poem? <laughs> because it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now we have a challenge for you. Obviously, you will not understand, most of you, unless and our, the Slovenians in here really understand and probably oh, know the poet and know the poem. Um, but uh, the rest of you, I would just say, listen to the rhythm and listen to the melody of the of the poem and i'm really really interested interested what you will come up with by listening to it so this is the final challenge and then you can just relax a bit yeah let's try it out you drink a beer or something <laughs> if there is poetry or no beer would not be not be like not be so bad a wine not, yes you should get a glass of wine yeah and if you don't have it's one, a whiskey or something. Yeah, something right? poetic. Yeah, mm. and go watch a sunset. <laughs> <laughs> okay, All right. okay, sorry. All right, that's good. Okay. Ko hodiš, pojď izmeraj do konca. Spomladi do rožne cvetice, poleti do zrele pšenice, jeseni do polne police, po zimi do snežne kraljice, V knjigi to zadnje vrstice, v življenju to prave resnice, sebi do rdečice, čez eno in drugo lice. 
a če ne prideš, ne prvič, ne drugič, do krova in pravega kova, poskusi vnovič in zopet in znova. So, um, yeah, let me tell you a few words about this poem. Um, I remember when I was uh, in my exchange year in Germany, so the first time I came to Germany, I wrote this poem down and put it on my wall because I loved it so much. And I don't know when I started liking it. I know we learned about it at school um, and we read it and read it and um, you know, I don't think we had to memorize it, but it was one of the poems you learned about at school. You know, you learn about your country's most, fam most famous poets and literature and, you know, come across all these great works and you don't really appreciate them when you're 16. But uh, I remember that like, years later, I remembered this poem. And I was like, wait, that was a beautiful, what was it again? Something with, you know, having to go to the end of the way always in life. So I googled it and I found it again. And this is what this poem is talking about. Whenever you walk, go to the end of the way. And it tells you about all the different things you have to go, where you have to go to the end of the way. Um, and even if you don't understand it, I hope you maybe try to hear something out, try to use the sound, the, all the auditive information, which was basically the only one you could get, um, to, to understand it and to interpret it. Yeah, yeah, it really is a great, great uh, poem. Um, I also have uh, nice memories mm. of this poem. Um, and of course, we 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 were also reading this poem when we were still in primary school, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, at secondary school again. But then sometimes you forget about those those poems. And in many times when you, I think you just find poems when when you need them to uh, to come in your life and. Um, for me, that was also a special moment when I when I rediscovered it once again, um, and I also wrote it in my diary. I can remember. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, so um, we have people thanking us: um, Atrum, <laughs> uh, TJM. I'm so glad I found you guys. Thank you that you found us. We are so <laughs> glad to have you. And uh, Senate says, "Awesome." And Carlos wrote Slishi se Chudovita, which is Slovene for it sounds beautiful. And Carlos, do you speak Slovene? What is going on? <laughs> <laughs> or was this, this like a quick a Google translate or do you speak Slovene? This is amazing right now. Lena, thanks for all the great ideas. And uh, Atrum says, um, I imagine something about a cave that rolls into itself. Interesting. Mm. Also what mm. this turned out to be. Okay. So, thanks a lot for joining us on this very special, maybe a bit weird, experiment. <clears throat> but, you know, we did it for you, the ones who are here, basically, and the ones who are will be watching and sticking all the way yeah. through. You know, push yourself to the limits of your creativity. Search inspiration out of your field. Yes, this is a great advice and one of the best ones I think we can give you. And even if it comes out weird today, you know, maybe it will trigger something that will give you an idea in three months. Yeah. And it's all about gathering those special experiences. Yeah. Um, this is what drives creativity, I would say. So what we work on is, this is also just one tool to get your creative juice flowing. And the more the tools you have in your toolbox, the better or more flexible you will be. And that also means that you will be more fluent and will be able to overcome many obstacles like... Creative block. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
So if you like this video, um, do leave it a thumbs up, we really appreciate it. Share it and um, please take your phone, take a snapshot of one of the poems you drew and post it into the Facebook group. Yeah, and you can also just write a number beside it so that we know which one was it. So was it one, two or the seven? Uh, because that would be very interesting to see, especially for the last one, right? Especially for the last yeah. one. Yeah. So, um, for the coming week, we have some nice stuff for you as well. So, on Wednesday, we're going to look at composition basics. So, Wednesdays, we're working on a skill. And this time, we're going to look at composition, and it will help you with every different medium that you use, in general, in your visual work. Friday, it's Feedback Friday. It's back again. We had one week break, but now send us your work and get feedback. And tell your friends this is a great way to get feedback on your stuff. And then uh, Saturday, you're going to dive into color again and make your own color wheel. Looking forward to that one. Yeah, it's going to be an amazing week. Yeah. So we wish you a nice rest of the day, night, evening, morning, whatever, wherever you are. And thanks a lot for joining everyone. Keep on drawing and stay creative. Bye.